Thanks for, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Matt Cohen. I'm the president and co-founder of Second Street, and we're delighted to continue to be part of the Schweiki uh, web series. Uh, fortunate to be joined today by Julie Foley, who's our director of affiliate success at Second Street. Um, and today we're going to dig into uh, what a, a trend that we're seeing at Second Street in, in real expanding opportunities around reader's choice. That's been uh, something that magazines have been doing for a long time, but we're seeing uh, digital really opening up a lot of great opportunities to do it more efficiently and tap into some new revenue streams. A little bit about who we are at Second Street. We really focus on working with media companies around online promotions, so contests, and deals, and email marketing, and ballots, and things along those lines are really specialization. And we're really fortunate to work with over 3,000 media partners across North America, um, and many of, them are newspaper, uh, many of them are magazines. So um, uh, we're always delighted to uh, uh, to work with our magazine partners. It's an expanding part of what we're doing. and, and we're over 3,000 partners really gives us a great deal of insight into what is working. And certainly ballots are one of the trends that we're seeing emerge uh, overall. When we think about trends in the big macro level that are really powerful. It's certainly the promotion space. Um, there's some Dan Brell and Associates, and it shows growth in online, in online promotions uh, over the looking back about four or five years and then looking forward ahead five years to 2017. And the forward in terms of growth of promotions has been, um, has been it's enormous. Um, and it's not surprising why. Promotions are uh, really uh, find uh, digital to be the perfect promotional medium. Um, it's really a lean forward medium where people can engage and enter contests and vote in contests and share information about themselves. Uh, they can deals and, and uh, debt coupons and uh, really engage with uh, with uh, me companies and in particular with advertisers in a big way. And so it's a huge opportunity uh, for media. Let's talk a little bit about ballots and uh, what magazines generally call uh, reader's choice. Um, as I mentioned before, this is not necessarily a new area, um, something we've been doing for a long time. Generally, um, it's been a great opportunity for event because Ballots are natural to appear in a print publication, whether it be a magazine or a newspaper or any kind of a niche publication. Um, a build ballot and putting it in usually about once a year, let your readers vote about the best of what you cover, whether that be a local geographic area or whether that be a special interest. It has been a long stay uh, of print publications. There's usually uh, generous revenue uh, that comes from these uh, ballot promotions, uh, these reader choice promotions, um, and uh, it's a great way to bring a variety of advertisers in uh, overall. There are also audience perspective. Um, um, your readers love being able to hear what your the rest of your readers think in terms of what is best in your community or in your area of interest. So audience is a big part of reader's choice. Ways to get your advertisers, in, frankly, in promoting you. Uh, a lot of uh, magazines or, um, or or other people involved with ballots um, will will pass out uh, table tents or, or door decals or or now uh, social media uh, toolkits or email toolkits to let your advertisers point people back to your website as they promote themselves, uh, a campaign for themselves uh, to be the best in your area. And, and these things have become really so big that in a lot of cases, um, it's not just about print or anymore, but it's about actual events. Um, I'm from Rhode Island, so it's great pride. I see this terrific event that the folks at Rhode Island Magazine do uh, in Prince, where I know the mayor and the governor come to this huge gala uh, celebrating the best of Rhode Island. And it all comes from a ballot uh, in, uh, that Rhode Island Magazine puts together. Well, it's, um are terrific, and Reader's Choice programs are terrific. I think anybody who's ever conducted one in the past would acknowledge that they can be challenging in some ways, or it's been challenging. There are some pain points. Um, I'm, many of you, this looks familiar, um, either your whole team or a bunch of temps, or we've some magazines actually send their paper ballots out to accounting firms 
to help them tabulate it. But it's uh, time consuming and costly as a whole. More, some people have found ways to move this out of paper ballots and take, uh, take ballots uh, online or other things like that and feed them into an Excel spreadsheet. But it's kind of a little bit of Excel hell, uh, excuse the term, um, to try and manage uh, all of those write-ins and merge them in together and dedupe them and uh, get, uh, get them to line up accordingly. Um, and when you do do that, um, generally people are using survey tools or basic web forms. And part of the problem is, is that they don't necessarily give you advertising opportunities um, as you bring your audience online. And that's really missing a big digital revenue opportunity as a whole. Over to Julie Foley, who I'm thrilled to have join us. Julie's a tremendous resource in the industry to talk a little bit about how some new tools that are emerging are allowing, uh, allowing magazines to uh, work their ballots much more efficiently and open up uh, some of these new rev digital revenue streams we've been hinting at here, here today. Thanks to be here uh, for having me. So yeah, so here's um, an example of a tool that can help um, solve some of these pain points. What we see here is an example of a ballot that has um, a combination of, of both a theory and an opportunity for a write-in. Um, that's been an issue where people would like e to have both, and you can normally only do either or. Um, so with, with this tool, you can have it open to have both seated and, um, of course, and when you're writing in something, so let's just say, for instance, you're writing in Applebee's, um, some people will write in Applebee's apostrophe S, Applebee's with no apostrophe, or Applebee's bar and grill. Um, so this tool allows you to now merge those write-ins, click on um, merge them together as a state in um, now they're all of those write-ins are now merged in as as the terminology so um, that's a really easy way to do that um, and this new tool is giving people the ability to tabulate and organize the, um, you know in a way and also offer some revenue opportunities which is what talk about in just a second. Um, and taking something that has normally taken hours to create and then tabulate and putting that into something that only creates 30 minutes or, or total to do, which is exciting because um, like Matt mentioned before, past these things are have very generous revenue when it comes to print and then able to um, take that has been a pain and it not so much a pain, make it actually much, much easier to run so that you want to run more of them um, and so that you can make more money. So let's talk about the revenue opportunities around uh, promotions. Um, and like, like I said before, print played a big role in this. A lot of revenue opportunities with print and, again, live events too, as Matt mentioned, a uh, big live event they do at the Rhode Island Magazine. But there's always been this, um, empty space with digital. Where do we make money online with a ballot promotion? How can we make digital revenue? And so what we're seeing now is that there's actually a lot more opportunities for digital revenue. And I'll walk through each of these for you and show you what I'm talking about. Number one is, is updated listing. So imagine on your ballot where you have your seated entries. You need to click on that entry and, and it drops down into something that looks like this, a logo, and a map, an interactive map. Um, a link to website, buttons to follow on Twitter, um, to like on Facebook, and of course, um, their to their website and their phone number. Um, so this is something that our uh, local media companies are selling um, to put on their ballot. Um, category sponsorships. So in the after school activities category, that you could have the uh, Velocity Dance Studio be the category sponsor of after school activities. Um, so their ad is running right there and it clicks through right to their website. Of course, next to the ballot that you can sell to advertisers, ask people to vote for them, vote for us, you know, through the best, um, best place to eat, uh, vote for us again. Um, and then, of course, your special print issue, an example of Madison Magazine, Rhode Island Magazine, big makers for them in print, now able to capture those dollars online as well. Um, like vote for me, thank you, ads. Um, you know, thanks for voting us, here's a coupon. Those are always wonderful. And 
live event. Um, and we're seeing more and more of these events pop up, and events are becoming um, something that people are doing for all of their, their best of. Pulling out the red carpet and making a huge event out of editing um, you know, like a best up. So this is really great. Um, example of a screenshot actually from a, a playbook that we've created um, the affiliate success team at second on, on make money with with a reader's choice ballot. And here's an example of what an integrated campaign could look like if you were to sell this to a sponsor that includes everything from email to your traditional print ads that you would run. Um, so uh, you should check that out too. Um, here is a study from Family Magazine in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, who ran a, um, a ballot, their, their reader's choice, but it was family favorite. So it had a twist. They are a family magazine, so they wanted to run their best of all about what is best for families, which I think is really, really cool. So this is a 35,000 cert paper in Oklahoma. And they sold these category sponsorships. They also had uh, online ads running along the, the right-hand rail here. But this is that after school activities. There's their category sponsorship right there for philosophy dance centers. Um, also selling enhanced listings um, or upgraded listings. So best place to buy a birthday cake, puppy show. Um, we bought an enhanced listing there. You can see there's their logo that's going up um, in the voting ballot. Social media, you know, we've got one hour. Nominate your favorites. Um, you know, win a big giveaway by nominating your favorites. What's the best date night restaurant in Oklahoma City? Nominate your favorites. All of these with a short link to the ballot so that folks could come in and vote for it. Um, just some takeaways on this on this niche um, ballot that they ran. It really appealed to that target audience, which was families. Um, and the businesses on the ballot could pay for those enhanced listings and category sponsorships, which have never been able to make digital revenue before. And um, with this opportunity now, they have the um, ability to, to make digital revenue. Um, and they ran a fun sweeps for everyone that actually went in and voted. Um, they entered into a sweeps to win a uh, family-friendly resort package, um, so which was really great. So they gave away a prize as an incentive to vote and digital revenue, as well as, of course, the revenue special section that they were going to do in print. Um, this is a case study that is from a local newspaper, but I want to show you some revenue opportunities around this ballot promotion. So just think of it in terms of your magazine. Um, this is a small market newspaper, a very small newspaper, 8,500 circulation. Of for 12 years. Um, and so normally they run just this print ballot and they get about 1,000 votes. They, you know, 2,000 people did it in and send it into the paper. Um, they sell print ads around it. And then they continue to run the print ballot um, so that they don't affect any of their single copy sales. And they continue to put it in print. And they do continue to make print revenue around the vote for the ads that go around on the ballot, as you can see here. But they also have now booked to online revenue through these ads, these upgraded listings for goods and services, like you see here, uh, pop out. Um, Three dollars in revenue for those online ads. Total of sixty thousand dollars in revenue for their best of special section. Um, they have um, a winners page, so after it's over, they're displaying the winners all year long, um, selling upgraded enhanced listings page as well to all of the winners um, is something that people go back to all along to find out where's the best place for breakfast, where's the best place to get my oil changed. If you go there and you have an um, upgraded listing, now people can click on you know, the egg plantation and they can like them on, on Facebook, they can follow them on Twitter, they can find out where they are with the interactive map, they can click through to their website. Um, and so they're booking revenue even after it's over, digital revenue. So if they were able able to book $75 in revenue for this, and for the first time ever, were able to generate vacant online traffic. They were able to get 115,000 votes versus just the thousand they normally got. All that online traffic, um, a significant revenue increase from 2012, due they were able to book, which they were able to do before, and they've planned. Right now, they're currently running their best of prep football. 
football, who's the best quarterback, what's the place, best place to go after the game, which is really cool um, when you think about all the niche things you can do with um, with the voter staff. So um, just, just once a year, uh, there's things to think about. So that's a good segue into talking about what, what, what Santa Rita was doing. They did their once a year, you know, their metro city. And then they decided, wow, there's so much more opportunity around ballots. What can we do? What else are we trying to do? Well, they're, they're launching a new version on their website, uh, Santa Clarita Sports, all sports. And they wanted to launch that ballot, and that's what they did um, with their prep football. But think of the things that you're doing, things that you can align with. It's an example of a calendar of ballots that you can run throughout the year. Um, Examples of um, of different themes you could do. So, best holiday shopping. Um, one generated seventy thousand dollars in revenue. They do a shopping guide um, for thisisrick.com. They do a holiday shopping guide every year. This year they decided they were going to do a ballot to outsource content um, to ask people not only where they thought was the best shopping, then put put it in the tutorial piece that they do, their print section that they do every year for holiday shopping, and. It it's seventy thousand dollars in revenue. Um, sports. I mentioned sports before. This is an example of a Notre Dame football ballot. Okay, not only voting on teams and players, who's the best quarterback, but also voting on things like memories and places to tailgate and where to go pre and post game. Everything around Notre Dame football. Um, something that people in uh, in office are very passionate about. The Cardinals' favorite call time. Players from each decade. And this is that one I was telling you about from the signal, their, pro, their prep football. Sponsored Providence, Providence Health and Services, $4,000 um, for that title sponsorship there. And they're going to sell all these upgraded listings to the folks that are also in this ballot, local, you know, or the pastors and things like that. So this is a really great one that's very niche. Um, community events, if you have a state fair, if you have something coming up, a local race. Um, the cure, things like that. These are really great. Getting your community involved around things that they're already passionate about that come to your community once a year was a really great one. Uh, people voted on things like favorite food and favorite ride. And the best, um, I think, for favorite ride was the beer tent. I thought that was really fun that someone thought that the beer tent was the best ride at the fair. That would probably be my pick, too. <laughs> um, and then parenting, which I, I gave you that example for Metro Family. Here it is again. Um, a quick snapshot of what that looked like. Weddings. Talk about the money-making industry there. Here is uh, wedding magazines, Bow Awards, Best of Weddings um, that they did. Um, digital with this as well as, of course, printing their, their great special section on the best of weddings. And then workplaces, okay, on, um, on the best places to work. It's all about food, the ultimate sandwich, the best of the uh, Taste of Mystic, which is a food festival. So this is the best food festival, um, which is a really, really great as well. Um, there's just your metro or your citywide. It's more than just once a year. There's a lot of great niche ideas that can really, really drive audience and content. And I'll turn it back over to Matt to talk about uh, the trends that we're seeing here too. Yeah, good job with the, the niche, and uh, it is great that you can still do that once a year uh, review of uh, your community or, or whatever audience is interested in the niche that you cover, but this ability to take that deeper dive is definitely very powerful. So I wanted to just uh, close by talking a little bit about how ballots really are, you know, something old that's really something very new, and it hits on a lot of the key trends that we're seeing in the media space right now. And it doesn't get in, in terms of a trend than, than in mobile. And really, if you're in a local geography, um, uh, these ballots are really meant to be done in the, the majority of the time people are spending voting on, on mobile because when they're out and about and they're eating a slice of pizza and, and the restaurant is asking them to vote for them in, uh, for the best pizza or maybe they're just uh, so delighted that they want to get involved themselves. Um, this is really, uh, uh, Reader's Choice is really about what's getting out and about, and when you're out and about, now you have that mobile device in your in your pocket, and you can participate at any time. So mobile is a big part of what Reader's Choice is all about. 
it's of course local. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're in a local community, being able to get this kind of content and let people get engaged um, is a huge, huge opportunity. And uh, this really one of my favorites, Julie. Um, I'm a big sports fan, and when you talk about high school sports and being able to do deep dive into high school football in this way, and I know the participation on this, on this, uh, on this promotion that's going on right now is off the charts, and it doesn't surprise me because people love to get involved in what they care about most, and and that's usually local. It's social, and uh, once again, social is kind of the gas on the fire of these kinds of ballot promotions. Uh, they're a great opportunity for you as a magazine uh, to put your own ballot and to find new ways to get the word out in very viral and social ways through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, really interest any of the social channels. But it's also a fantastic way for advertisers or for anybody who finds themselves on the ballot or for your individual readers to get involved campaigning uh, for different uh, for different categories uh, on your overall ballot. So we're just seeing an explosion of social around this and it looking to be relevant socially and get people sharing um, a link back to your site to participate in the ballot. This is a great way to go about do doing it. Opportunities uh, as examples here. In content and Julie, you mentioned this earlier, and this is really one of my favorite things I see from uh, from ballots. Um, you know, all of us have editorial resources that are more constrained than ever before, and all have opportunities to hear from our readers, which in many ways becomes the richest content we'll possibly have. Uh, you know, sometimes any of us as uh, publishers or editors or journalists, we have a lot of ideas about what's best in our community, but our readers give us a huge reporting network uh, that can really unearth some of the best things out there. So whether it be the State Fair, Julie, or anything else, there are these great opportunities to, to leverage your audience, leverage your readership to make you even smarter and make your reporting smarter overall. Is really one of the, the, the biggest trends we're seeing right now. There's a lot of talk about BuzzFeed, um, a lot of talk about lists as a whole. Magazines, we know these have always worked. But when you look at BuzzFeed and you look at this at this page, the next one overall, you see that um, lists are what dominating the incredible growth that BuzzFeed and others are seeing. Um, thing on this page is either a list or a bats or a list about cats. Um, and um, but lists are kind of uh, are the kind of form of editorial content that just works particularly well online, uh, all and that's really what uh, Reader's Choice programs are about. Um, it doesn't have to be BuzzFeed that's doing a list. I, I love this story. Um, it was a story that I engaged with and shared actually with my wife and, and my young sons about Syria. They're asking a bunch of questions, and it's from the Washington Post. I know when Jeff Bezos bought the Post, this is one of the stories that he's really kind of called out as, as uh, some of what he sees as the, as the future, kind of friendly but informative content uh, that, uh, that he thinks can be very effective uh, online. So anything around lists. Powerful, even the New Yorker magazine, uh, not known for its brevity um, and uh, and lists, um, has recognized this trend of listicles and lists and the power of it, and they they have their own uh, top ten here, uh, all about lists. Um, here it's uh, it, it's it's about um, uh, you know just generating a list of the best of local thing, uh, or ultimately using it uh, to help. Uh, feed your editorial. How many of you, you know, write stories about this all the time? Like, what are the top ten moments in St. Louis sports history? And the power of these ballots is to either um, put together your own list uh, through your journalists and then contrast it with maybe what your readers think, or let your readers decide what that is, and then put your reporters to work reporting on uh, the background of uh, and history of of each of these lists or whatever whatever you come up with as a whole. So this is a very powerful trend. SM advertisers, uh, particularly in the local space, this is something we're all trying to do more and more with. We're trying to broaden the number of advertisers. As I mentioned earlier, the, the power of being able to make yourself relevant to a small business, um, to get them promoting you and to be able to walk in the door and have a very congratulate them on being nominated for the best of uh, best of your city the best of your coverage, and begin a conversation about 
how they're promoting themselves in your ballot. Um, so how are they promoting themselves overall? We're finding it's a great lead gen opportunity to generate uh, additional revenue uh, from advertisers overall. Generate reviews. How much of us? How many of us in the local space have Yelp in our market? Uh, many of us in the local in, uh, in niche space have uh, another player that's similar that's generating a lot of user reviews. And ballots give us a way to relevantly compete with the, the folks uh, at Yelp and others who have really come in nationally and uh, tried to uh, to steer audience away from uh, away from us uh, to these local kind of reviews that are crowdsourced. And then. A number of times with these live events are really powerful, and I know that's something that all magazines are, are doing more and more with, and, and uh, whether it be your, uh, your ballot across your entire community uh, or one of these niche or choice programs that we've been sharing with you, uh, that be, gives you chances to take more and more, uh, broaden your, your events to a great deal and, and generate even more revenue for them as a whole. Uh, uh, close on some resources that we can provide you uh, around uh, these expanding opportunities in Reader's Choice. Um, at, if you go to secondstreetlab.com slash voters choice, you'll find a tons of, revenue, of uh, resources and uh, content around, uh, around ballots and expanding uh, on some of the things that we've spoken about today. A, a playbook that expands on many of these things as well, and you can find that playbook at that uh, same address that we showed you before. We update that um, quite often. Uh, so definitely uh, take a look at the articles that we have on, uh, on the big page for Voters' Choice and, and download that playbook and, and see those case studies of how people are making money with Voters' Choice. So there's some good resources to check out. And of course, you can find us uh, uh, at any time. Um, uh, you can reach uh, Julie at Julie at SecondStreet.com, uh, all spelled out, and myself, Matt, at SecondStreet.com, uh, and we'd be delighted to help you uh, with any questions that you have um, or any, any feedback you have on, on what we shared here today. Julie, Julie at um and just that once your opportunity, I think some of the most exciting ballots that we've seen have been the ones that have come from um, those niche opportunities that people are taking. Um, of course, you know I love the sports stuff too. The football one is uh, is my favorite, but the shopping one is a, is a close second. So think of opportunities that you have, like the Metro family and their family ballot that they did, um, how you can um, create something for your audience um, that they'll, they'll really resonate resonate with them. Right. It's hard to think of anybody who's better positioned around this than magazines. Uh, with the legacy of doing these kinds of programs and your passionate uh, audiences around it and uh, your ability to tie in uh, those, not only the digital revenue opportunities, but those, you know, very lucrative print special sections uh, uh, that you put into your magazine. This is just a, a fantastic opportunity as we turn to 2014. So uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And thanks so much.